Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, let's get into it. We both watched the debates. What are your initial impressions? So the big thing is the worst thing you do in a debate is like screw up. And nobody really screwed up tonight. Right. Particularly Elizabeth Warren, who's doing well in the polls, did not make any big mistakes. She did not forget how many agencies she wants to close, for example. She did not screw up. And that was big for her. Do you think that that, that, that was the main thing for, for Elizabeth Warren coming in was just like don't lose your top spots? That's what I, because she's got the momentum right now. She's done well. She's been gaining in the polls. So you don't want to make a mistake, forget something, say right. something dumb. And I think she did. And she actually was pretty good to be, you know, not just, she, not just she wasn't bad. She right. actually was pretty good. No, she, in terms she, of explaining her policies yeah, really she well. She seemed solid. She yeah. laid out her policy ideas. She knew what she was coming in to do. And, and genu genuinely, I feel like she had a certain swag about her right. where she wasn't afraid of, of trying to talk over people. She wasn't... She just... She was in command of that stage. And when he asked... When Lester asked who's going to raise their hand for Medicare for All, she was yes. really willing to do so. That was yes. a big moment where her and de Blasio... I do think of the also-rans, the people who weren't doing that well on the stage, de Blasio and John Delaney, who I... My guess is John Delaney, not a lot of folks have heard of up to now. But I thought... Right. He had a pretty right. strong night in jumping in there and getting in there. When you look at the, the policies that were discussed, it seems like all the Democrats were, as I say, shades of gray. You know, it, it, was, it was a spectrum, but it was within a certain totally. palette. Looking at, at, at um, somebody like Amy Klobuchar, she came in, she was a bit of a contrarian to the rest of the group, but she, she seemed like she laid out a pretty good case for why she wanted to do what she wanted to do. What do you think each candidate needs to do to try and get their policy to be the one that's recognized above other policies which are similar to theirs? It's hard. Like, if you're Warren or you're Bernie Sanders, the answer is my policy is way to the left, everybody else. Right. So that's a very clean one. And you saw Delaney tonight basically saying, all that stuff, details, unrealistic, kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So he's mm -hmm. been to the right of that. But otherwise, I think it's very hard. You saw Castro tonight trying to say, I have the most, uh, I have the best immigration plan. But yes. I wonder for the average viewer if that was a fairly confusing conversation. Yeah, because where he, he, was, he started talking about the actual name, name of the, of the bill. Yes, and the I name think of the bill. Yes. Be, you know, but I do think, I think Castro was emphatic on the issue. And also, he's the Latino candidate. I think people know he spoke on immigration in great detail. Mm -hmm. He emphasized his background a little bit. I think that that was useful for him as well. Let's talk about the moderators for a little bit, you know, because a lot of these debates are determined by the people who sure. are moderating the debates. What do you think of the job that they did? So I like the question where they ask people. I know you made fun of the hand raising because it's like first grade, right? But it does help you understand where, like, the clearest moment it, is. It really does. I know yes. De Blasio and Elizabeth Warren are for are for Medicare for all and not right. for private insurance. Everybody else isn't. Uh, on Iran, I know that Cory Booker is. Somewhat different than their candidates, although yes. he was he sort of confused that a little bit. Right, because so his hand he like was in, out, not in, and then he said the thing, then took it he back. Took it back, and it was yeah, confusing. Yeah. I'll give them some credit for not, you know, the control room jobs are hard. And I thought it was good they didn't bash their colleagues by name who were not, right. you know, sort of not doing that. Well, I thought the moderate, I thought there were some questions that were great, some that were not great. I think it's a really hard job. The thing that I thought was hard to deal with in fact was like Inslee, particularly, these guys are all trying to jump in and say, I want to talk, I want to talk, yes. I want to talk like a first grade class again. So I think they did a good job kind of... The I looked at the time balance, mm -hmm. and Warren and Booker spoke the most, I think, but it was it was not unbalanced. Tim Rang got to probably speak the least, is what I think I saw. Right. But everybody got to talk some, so I thought the moderators did a pretty good job. They were, you know, in terms of asking questions. If you look at the impact of a debate, I mean, it, it's fair to assume that most of the people watching these debates would probably be left-leaning or Democrat, you know? Once it becomes national, it feels like more people tune in because now they want to see policies against each other. If somebody from a red state were to tune in, and I know this is close to you, you know, because, because of where you're from, if someone tuned in from a red state, what policies do you think they would have seen today where they would have gone, oh, yeah, that, that, that message appealed to me as somebody who lives and votes red? You know, I don't... You know, I live in Kentucky, just for the audience, so I don't know that anything sort of jumped... Like, Tim Ryan, I think, did the best job of saying... I'm... You know, he talked about the opioid crisis. Yes. He did a good job, actually. He sort of named... He sort of name-checked parts of Ohio. And yes, I think he right. talked about red state America. Klobuchar did, right. too, in terms of talking about she wants to unify all people. I think mm -hmm. those were pretty good answers. But I do think it's going to be hard. I'll be curious what Joe Biden does tomorrow, because he's the person, I think, that's most trying to do that. Although I emphasize one thing to note is that, in general, we find 
find is that a lot of people don't actually watch the debate itself, even though they tell us they do later. They, you know, people all, everybody votes until you look at the numbers and then so people right, 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 and right. what you find is the biggest thing is like what happens in the viral moments. Like a lot of people don't watch the debate and what gets covered the next day ends up having as big of an impact as actually what is said oh, that's in the interesting. So what the news covers in other words. So my guess is tomorrow will be Dil Bill de Blasio yells mm -hmm. and people will mm -hmm. we'll get out there, for example. Right. You know, Castro took on Beto. I yes. think that'll be a moment. Right. Tulsi Gabbard talking about how we should get all troops out of Afghanistan. That might be a moment. So I think the key thing is, can you create, I think the, the world is now kind of a viral moment world. Which, is, which, is, think, which, is, which is bad because I, when it comes to a debate like this, you want the nuance, you, you want, want the, the fuller context. Now it seems like things are going to be distilled into moments. So through that lens, which moments do you think stood out where you go, that person did a great job of branding that? Because I was watching it, and for the most part, as much as Castro was emphatic, I found that the branding was lacking. If, you, if you're not familiar with policy, if you don't yes. know what the numbers are, it didn't connect with you. Which people do you think had the clearest moments of branding where you go, that's stuck in someone's head? The clearest, I thought, were one, Bill de Blasio said private insurance doesn't work. It has all these right. problems. I think that was very clear. Right. John Delaney, a few different times, said, all my arrivals have dumb plans that'll never happen, and I'm real. <laughs> and he was very blunt about that. Right. I think that will come through. And I think Tulsi Gabbard, she mentioned that she served in Iraq, and I think the, the fact that she was so emphatic about saying we should have no troops in Afghanistan yes. and no one should be dying there, those are the three comments. And I think Warren, over over again said, I'm a populist. The big companies are doing too much to hurt the yes, little guy. Yes. I think her message broke through. I would say who didn't break through, to me, Booker and Beto were two people I thought when this race started could win. And I still think they're not doing well in the polls. And as far as I watch, when I think about this debate, neither one of them said anything or made a moment that I think right. helped them that much. And I think they need to start having those moments to get into that top five. Well, this was night one. Thank you so much for joining us. It was more exciting than most people anticipated. Yes. Appreciate having you here. Thanks, Trevor. 538's Perry Bacon Jr., everybody.